And this weekend, WKYC and certainly the greater Cleveland area in general lost the great Dick Fegler, one of the true legendary storytellers in Cleveland journalism. Dick was a Peabody Award winner, an Emmy Award winner many times over, and a member of the Cleveland Press Club Hall of Fame. In his 50 years in journalism, he was well known for his pointed commentaries right here on Channel 3 and his columns in the Cleveland Press and the Plain Dealer. Dick Fagler was 79 years old, and I was so sad to hear that news last night. Joining me now, Brent Larkin, who was a colleague and I believe a boss of Dick Vagler at one time, <laughs> right? At the press if and at the could boss him. City, yeah. If there a was, boss, a, if you could only, boss Dick Vagler around, I can assure you, yes, my good friend and former colleague Tom Bears, you'll always be a colleague. And of course, we sat in the Channel Three newsroom for many entertaining nights with Dick Vagler. Right, <laughs> right. And, and before we go, we have to get your spot on impersonation a little bit. But uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to work with him twice. Once, my, my first paying job in the media was a copy boy at the Cleveland Press, so I got to fill the coffee cup, sharpen the pencils, and get the hot off the presses editions for Dick Fagel and the other reporters, and then I worked with him here at three, honored to, to do both. As a writer, how would you characterize him? Almost indescribable. I, I, I went back to his, he had three books, and I looked at, reread parts of his first book today. He was the last, Dick was the last superstar newspaper, newspaper person that came to come out of this town. And then he, then he became, to borrow a football term, a dual threat. Yeah, yeah. He, he went into TV and he became a, 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 a celebrity. He really did. You know, that's a tough jump. A lot of people try it. Some succeed. I thought he over-succeeded. He was an actor. He could act out his columns. He could become the character, the subject matter of the column. And I would just envy him so much. As I would, I sat right next to him in the in the uh, Channel Three newsroom at the old building, and I would just marvel at how how simple he made it look, banging it out, well, and how beautifully and, and, and he the, delivered the way it. he presented it. Yeah. That kind of crusty, curmudgeonly, but yeah. you know, underneath he knew there was a big soft spot. And he protested a little bit too much about how much he hated this business because <laughs> I think this business was pretty good to him and he was good to it and well he always would say Brent I don't I don't have the anchor hair there's no <laughs> yeah. doubt about it that I mean a, he had a, it just an just an indescribable as you say an indescribable delivery Tom Right. Well, that was that was that was a very interesting experiment where you know Channel Three had a revolving door on the anchor desk for a while and they said oh let's try to put Dick Fagler in there and. Sort of had mixed reviews. You know, I would have unbelievably long talks with him about life. And he talked, I was about ready to get married, okay? And we talked, and, and I invited him to my wedding. And he kept saying to me, Are you sure you want to go through with this? Cheryl's a lovely girl. And then I said, Yes, I do. And he brought over the invitation. He said, If you're really going to go through with it, Jimmy, I will attend. And he came to our wedding. Uh, but the talks about life with him were amazing. He was, Dick was an intellectual, and he became the voice of Clevelanders. He did. Not Cleveland, Clevelanders. He wrote about Mrs. Figment in her <laughs> laundry, and he wrote about Aunt Ida, who was a real person. And he was a brilliant writer. He was the best writer I've ever worked with. And I wouldn't even venture a guess as to who's second. Tom, I thought he was very influential at one time in a mayoral race oh. here in Cleveland. Mike White, George Forbes in the final. I really felt yes. that he I felt that he had a vision for Mike White. I think Mike White appreciated it a great deal. I thought that George Forbes I think, I think, knew I, that there was a bit of a wrath with Dick Fagler, and I thought he was influential in that election. I, 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 think, so. I think he did have a, a lot of respect for Mike White, and, and not to say that he was biased, no, but, yeah. uh, but he, uh, I think he did what he could to put him in the most favorable light. He be became close later in life to Dennis. To Dennis. Dennis Kucinich, wrote some yeah. brilliant columns about Dennis giving the town a, a nervous breakdown in the late 70s. And he was very close to Carl. Carl Stokes and was his best friend in politics. You know, he also was a great lover of radio, and he loved the Indians, yes. and he loved listening to the Indians. Well, and I used to remember, Tom and Brent, that he would sit with the great Leon Bibb. Okay, and he would talk about that great Indians team that Lou Boudreau played on and managed, right, 48. Right. And he would say, Leon, the thing about Boudreau is, 
I mean, he not only plays a great shortstop, right. but he managed the team. Well, I mean, he was a product of that time. And again, he grew up listening uh, to the Indians. Jimmy Dudley yes. calling the Indians Bob game, Neal, right? right? Yeah. 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 Dick never really even tried to become, to keep up with the times in some regard. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. You're right, Brad. Yeah. Computers, technology. No interest in that. And he had, in his the nursing home where he, where he spent the last few months, he had an old radio with a dial on it, and he listened to it. <laughs> yeah, he really did. Um, and he was a great voice for Cleveland. That's he, how I would sum him he up. He was one of a kind. He yes. really was. Irreplaceable. I mean, Chicago had Mike Royko, and New York had Jimmy Breslin, and, and Cleveland had Dick Fagel. And, and Dick, and on his best day, he was as good or better than Mike and those Royko. Guys. Yes, he was. Yeah. It's been fun. I mean, it's sad, but it's been fun reliving his it, memories. And it's good that you that you that uh, Channel Three and you, you were know, doing. I, this. I wish he, it hadn't happened on such it. a busy news day with uh, yeah. with LeBron and uh, terrorism. But uh, that would have know, been an just, interesting column about well, LeBron. Richard would not have liked <laughs> yeah. the timing. No, <laughs> right. no. Brent, thank you very okay. much. Okay. Tom, yeah. as always, All right. never be a stranger. Take care, Jim. Well,